Stop recording video. Button. One face. Lunch. Voice over off. <clears throat> Squeezebox players and indeed fellow musicians and YouTubers. Uh, as you know by now, my name's Jack Scrimshaw and what I'm here to do today is something very different. Usually you know I play songs on here every week um, or something that resembles a song. Um, what I thought we'd do today, and this is entirely my friend Humphrey's fault. He suggested this and I thought, do you know what, I've got nothing to lose, let's try. We are going to start a series of that I'm going to call uh, Squeeze Box Basics as the time comes up to 10 o'clock. As you can tell, this is unscripted, it's amateur. Um, I'm not a professional teacher. I, I am a sort of a semi pro musician, but I am not a music teacher by trade. But I'm going to pass over a few skills on the concertina and the accordion. Uh, again, a little bit of a disclaimer, I'm not an expert concertina player, I'm not a master of the accordion. I play both these instruments and I use them on some of my recordings. Um, but what I thought I'd do is pass on a few uh, little tricks and tips that will maybe not turn you into a professional. You might not be as good as uh, John Kirkpatrick or John Spires or Benji Kirkpatrick by the time you've watched this series. That's if it becomes a series, you know, we'll, we'll see how this video goes and if this goes well, we'll do another one. Um, very, very loose, uh, this is, you know. I know there are concertina lessons on YouTube. Uh, there are a very fine collection of lessons done by a chap called Martin, uh, who did a great series of English concertina tutorials. But as happens to the best of us, um, you know, I guess he got busy with other things and other projects. And um, a teacher can only take you so far as well, to be honest. The rest is up to you. So, anyway, enough of the pedigree. Let's get on with what I want to do in today's lesson. I will have you singing by the end of this lesson. So, first of all, what is this? This is an English concertina. It is the smallest of the squeeze box family. Although this is actually quite a big one, um, and these are coming back into fashion very quickly. Um, a very quick overview, there are 30 keys on this one. This is a clear water concertina. Um, it's Italian made, and it is fa fairly cheap. Um, it's, it's not nasty, I thought it would be for the price. Uh, this was basically bought so I could crash around and um, get used to concertina. But I've actually had this for about three or four years, and it's served me very well. Um, as I say, there are 30 buttons, including an air button. Because, as you can see, this part, here in the middle, is uh, bellows, leather bellows. And that is basically the lungs of this machine. That's what makes it breathe. By the way, before we go on, uh, on this lesson for the English treble concertina. When you're buying a concertina, how do you know the difference between an English and an Anglo? Well, these on the side here. Your English box will have a thumb strap and it will also have these metal finger rests. Whereas the Anglo, across the top here, uh, where my right hand is, would have a strap which would go across the back of your hand. Uh, plus, when you play an Anglo concertina, you draw the bellows out, you get that note, but when you push them in again, you get another note. Whereas on the English concertina, you get the same note each way. It's actually not a very good idea to do that. It's not very good for the bellows. Um, but there we are. So, today's lesson, we are going to learn a scale, we are going to learn a couple of chords, and then we are going to learn a sea shanty, because initially that's what these were used for. They were taken on sailing ships because they were small and portable, 
and the shanty man would uh, play shanties and sing songs. So, the scale of C, the people's key, that's what we're going to learn today. Now, you can see that the concertina, unlike the accordion, is all buttons. There are, there are no keys on this. And the buttons are in four rows, uh, for each side. Um, so you're going to figure out, well, all these buttons look the same. This looks really scary. How am I going to figure it out? It's not. Uh, there is a pattern. You just need to train your hands. And this all works on muscle memory. We will be using our ears and our memories in these lessons. We're not using music at any point. So what you want to do... Uh, to find your C note, which is middle C on a piano keyboard, is take your left hand and find the row of buttons. There are three all together, and then there's one way off on this box. Your box may be similar, it may be different, depending on how many buttons you've got. They go up to 56 keys, these do. Uh, the most common is 48. This is a 30. So find your C button. It will sound like this. And place the first finger of your left hand on it. With your right hand, find your D button. Um, by the way, for my blind viewers, if you're wondering how to hold the concertina, you hang your thumbs from the two thumb straps and it will rest quite comfortably in the two hands with your small finger and your ring finger supporting it quite comfortably. Some players like to rest it on their front. I don't because I lose a bit of focus there and I think it muffles the sound. So I kind of hold it out in front of me. So anyway, C button with the left hand, D button with the right hand. Now, with our second finger, we're going to move that up a row and with the left hand we have our E with the right hand we have our F so there's a pattern emerging here we're basically <coughs> excuse me we're going up the rows um, and we're basically moving away from our front or our face depending on where the concertina is so if you can imagine I'm holding this and the third button is uh, the one, the, the last button before the space. On my concertina there's a space and then there are two buttons that are off in the distance. So, C and D are there. You can, hopefully you can see that on the camera. I'm trying to move my fingers out of the way. And with the second finger, E and F. Then for G and A, we bring our first finger uh, up onto the same row as D, uh, as E and F, excuse me, and we basically allow the first finger of each hand to sit next to the second fingers on the buttons above them. That's G and A, and then we move our second finger up to the uh, row above, and we have B and C. So you can actually go pretty fast once you've learned that. Now, bellows technique is important. Um, as you can hear, some of those notes were getting a bit muffled. That's because I was running out of air. And the best way to control your bellows is to treat it as a beat. So we'll take a note and we'll count out the length of the bellows. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now it starts to pull here. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Now... There was a bit of pull after 10, but you noticed around 12 we started to lose the note. I think a sensible count is a count of 8 uh, for your bellows. So if you're playing a song 
You can allow yourself a count of eight, um, sometimes a count of four, depending on how quick the song is, before you um, bring your bellows back in. So, there's our C scale. You can pause this, obviously, and rewind it. Basically, memorize that C scale. Now, we're going to learn a couple of chords. The first chord, obviously, because it's a C scale, we're going to learn a C chord. And all we do, basically, is we take our first and second finger on the left hand, first finger on the C button, second finger on the E button. Now, you can invert these chords. We can move that up uh, to E and G. Or, ah, we can't go in G and C with the left hand. We have to go with the left and right. You notice I'm only using my first and second finger. I know players that do use the third finger. For me, it's not comfortable. Now, we did have a G chord in the left hand, so surely there's a chord we can grab in the right hand, and you'd be right. It's an F chord. So, C, a couple of inversions, G, and Three chords. With those three chords, you can play a lot of songs. We're going to have a go at a song now to finish out the video. If you've managed to learn this scale, learn where your fingers go, and everything else, you can play along. In lesson two, what I'm going to do is basically break this song down, slow it down, and um, we're going to go through it note by note. But feel free to jam along here at the end. Practice. Uh, see how far you get. You don't get far don't worry about it lesson two we're going to break it down we're going to finish each lesson with a song and then in the next lesson we break it down and make it slower some lessons as we get more advanced with these instruments we're just going to spend the whole lesson working on a song no scales so here we go as i was a walking down killigrass streets Young Paul is such a sport to meet. Give me some time to blow the man down. Blow the man down, Paul is blow the man down. We blow the man down. Oh, blow him away, boys, to Liverpool town. To blow the man down. So that's the end of our first squeeze box basics video. Um, if there's anything I can improve, improve upon in these lessons, please let me know. All I would ask is that you be constructive. Um, no need to be insulting. You know, these lessons are free. I'm just doing this for a bit of fun. Um, be constructive with, constructive with your criticisms. If I can do anything different, I will. Um, I should tell you, if it's anything to do with the camera, um, I'm totally blind, so there's only so much I can really do with that. But I will do my best to accommodate you. Um, if this goes well, this gets a lot of hits. We'll have lesson two. If it doesn't, well, this was fun. It was an experiment. Let's see how it goes. I've been Jack Scrimshaw. Please hit the subscribe button. You can hear all my songs and everything else that I do on here, both with the concertina and all the other instruments that I have here. As always, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks for taking the time to watch and listen. Have a great day. Or a great evening wherever you are. Voice it wrong. Camera. Take picture. Stop recording video.